When we talk about the Incas, we need to have very present that they are still there. The Quichua people that live in the Andean region, in parts of Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, south of Colombia, northern Argentina, northern Chile, are the descendants of the Incas. Actually, the Incas were not called Incas. The Spaniards called them Incas. Inca was the name of the king. Inca was the emperor. Actually, the people were the Quichuas. The empire was called the Tiahuantinsuyu. That means the four directions of the world. And the Spaniards took it, this whole thing wrong. And they call the, the whole country and the civilization by the name of the emperor. Inca means emperor. That's the case. The language of the Incas was the Quichua. The Inca empire was uh, very centralized, was um, comparable to Egypt in many ways, with an uh, emperor that was considered also the son of the gods, and a uh, centralized administration with a bureaucracy, with central archives, with public education for free for the citizens, with silos and reserves of food for bad moments, with a centralized army, with a foreign policy that was controlled from Cusco, the, the capital of the empire. There was also a centralized system of roads, amazing roads, in this very rough terrain of the Andes. Not just roads, but also bridges and public works and uh, motels in, in which the merchants and the messengers uh, could lodge during their trips a system of uh, alert by bonfires and messengers running from different parts of the empire. Uh, this was, as I said before, a heavily centralized empire. There was no private property of the land. The land was owned by the state and by the community. Part of the land was worked by the community and the profits were split among the, the little village, for example and uh, the land of the state was worked by the community as well, and that food was stored for moments of uh, famine, for example, or floods, or for feeding the troops, for feeding the bureaucracy, but uh, it was a, a complex and very different type of social organization, and all of that collapsed after the Spanish colonization of Peru in the Andean region. For a long time, uh, the religion, the original uh, Quichua religion was prohibited. Uh, the same happened with the Aymara, mm, another civilization in the uh, Andean part of Bolivia, mm, very similar to the Incas and very related one to the other, like the Greeks and the Romans. Uh, lately, in the last, let's say, 40 years, they have more freedom, they were more able to worship the, the way they want, to go back to their ancestral traditions, uh, even to participate in politics in a much more active way. And as I have said, uh, some Aymaras and Quichuas were already president of their countries. There is like a blossoming of the traditional culture over there in the Andes, in Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, in particular, and at the same time many, prob many problems because, of course, the Native American population constitutes still the, the poorest part of the inhabitants in these countries. Then also I invite you at the end of the chapter about the Andes to read and learn about the current conditions of living for the Quichua people and the Aymara people in that region, because that's important. This is a tarka, and again, like in the case of the Aztec instruments, you are supposed to blow a lot. It's not. You are supposed to get that rough sound. And these instruments come in different sizes. We have the, the smallest and some kind of small tarka. There are one that is like this, and the other is really, really big always in families like the brass instruments or the saxophones we know, 
the Tarkas come in families, is the only of these instruments that is made on wood, not reed. Hmm? The Tarkas. It's like the brass of the Andes. These are sicus, also called Samponias, hmm? a big, big one, and there are much bigger than these ones, even. And a fairly small one, there are some that are much smaller, and you're going to see these uh, very often in the Andean cultures, are parallel reeds, completely hollow, and the thing that, the factor that determines the, the pitch is the uh, length of the reed. I'm not going to try to play this because I am very bad at this. I never understood the mystery, but you have very good samples in our class. Other instruments that you're going to see during the class is the, the kena, hmm? the main instrument, the instrument that the shepherds go and take with them when they go to see for their goats or their cows or their llamas, hmm? and they sit in a stone and they play this one. But you can also see this one playing with fusion rock bands. Hmm? It's a very versatile and very popular instrument. It is a moseño. These are mostly an Aymara instrument mm, from the vicinities of La Paz in Bolivia. And this instrument comes also in different sizes, four different sizes. This is a reproduction of the, the base of the family of the Moseños. And all the instruments are studied and analyzed and featured in our classes. That's an um, Andean bombo, a uh, bass drum. Mm? Uh, it's big, but it's very light, mm? because you are supposed to hang this in your side, and you march mm, with this. You play with one hand here, and with your left hand, you play a little flute, or you play one of those sikus, the one with multiple uh, tubes. Mm? Uh, this is the most typical drum in the Andean culture. Uh, could be a little shorter in the south, especially. This is more like northern style. Or could be completely flat, like a bass drum in a marching band. In that case, it's called uh, Wankara. But the purpose is the same. It's a bass drum in the Andean music, whether Quichua or Aymara. That was a, a very common instrument throughout the Inca Empire and very common today in all these uh, Andean mountain communities, the bombo. <laughs> 